What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Today is Wednesday, February 14th? Yep, Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. I'm heading to my next service call, which is located in Valley Stream. We have a new client that's a YouTube subscriber. Been a subscriber for a while, saw my videos, and he goes, Mikey Pipes. I know you got a great team, but I only want you to come to service my boiler. Let's go see what's going on. Give them the old once over, take care of them, and bring someone else aboard to the Pipe Doctor team. Let's get going. Must be Lorenzo. Yes. Hi, Lorenzo. Mike. How you doing? Pleasure to meet you. Same. Finally, I see you in person. Very nice. <laughs> what we got going on today? So, I just recently moved here, and that's a recent moment last May. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Where'd you move from? Brooklyn. <laughs> Welcome to suburbia. In the land of high property taxes. Yeah, yeah. That I'm, I am uh, realizing. <laughs> Did you not know that before? Uh, I kind of heard stories and everything, but... Welcome to the village. <laughs> you know, they want to take everything you have. Yes, pretty much, pretty much. you got a steam boiler, don't you? Yes, uh, slant fin. Um, so... The thing is with this, I called you earlier because I started following you back in May because I wasn't familiar with this. I'm used to seeing um, baseboards. Yes. I'm on their contract not to do repairs because the contract has them doing repairs from, from the previous owners. You're under contract. Say that one more time. So my contract is not to do the, sorry, okay. the repairs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Not to do the repairs. Um, on the on the equipment? Yeah. How's that? How's uh, that work? Because there are a couple violations down here. Oh. Like makeup air? Uh, well on? down here was oh, like basement. a whole yeah. It's a basement. Oh illegal uh yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> so uh, Tell me you have it for religious purposes. Huh? Tell me you have it for religious purposes. <laughs> Second kitchen and basement bathroom. Yeah. Sat side entrance, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um that was just put in. Monday. Did you jerk the pit? Uh, Very yes. nice. Yes. So you you'll, you probably saw the old one sitting outside. No, I didn't notice. I just oh. was trying not to trip in the snow. Uh, it's okay. okay. I say good technician. I know. I was observing the surrounding. I know. I was observing <laughs> of that. I'll bust my ass on your on your on your property. That way, I sue my insurance company. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah sorry about that. It's okay. Uh, it's all good. No, no. We made it. We made it alive. It tell me. Tell me about uh, why I'm here. All right. And why so, we're standing at your stair steam boiler. Well, you always say if you're not testing, you're guessing. Correct, right? absolutely. Okay. So I wanted to see how efficient this is. Okay. Like a, a tune-up. Okay, sure. No problem. We're in the no this of the months of the, the winter season. How's, how's it been uh, performing so far? Um, so, like I said, they just did some work on Monday. Um, from watching your videos, I forced them to do a couple of things. On this? Yes. What did you have to do? So pressure flow was not connected. There was no wire here. not connected? Was no it was wire? just here. It was just <laughs> sitting here. Do you got any pictures or video of that? I, I might, share? I might. I have to check. I'd love to have that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, the guy comes in. I was like, uh, yeah. I was like, we don't have no backflow preventer. I mean, uh, yeah, backflow uh, preventer. Um, I have no pressure. He's like, yeah, the pressure flow's here. I was like, yeah, the gauge doesn't work. It's sitting there and it's great, but it's not connecting. It's not controlling anything. And since they've put the wire, I've noticed, because what I used to get is when I run it, I used to get these loud banging, banging sounds. sounds upstairs. Yeah, because you had no control of pressure. Right. The only thing I have was the relief valve, which I checked was 15. Um, and because I pulled all this, I pulled all this off, cleaned it out. You know, it's a fairly, it looks fairly new of a boiler. Right. So they told me it was brand new when except, it was Except, except there's a few things that are wrong with it that I see. Okay. Um, for starters, 
this equalizer pipe mm -hmm. needs to be no less than one pipe smaller than right. the pipe is connected to. So you have two inch, it's going to a one inch. Right. Another thing is your Hartford loop doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. If there was a Hartford loop, it would be this vertical uh, horizontal pipe here, which is about 20 inches long. Right. This T needs to be halfway on, on the side glass. Right. And that 20 inch nipple should be a close or a shoulder nipple. Right. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. This is really, you can't have it like this. This is way too high. Your condensate, mm -hmm. your condensate return is literally four, I would say four feet tall almost. Yeah, give or take. And that needs to be literally like right. down here. Mm -hmm. So think about all of that. Your, the end of this main at the front of the house, which is probably where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, wow. I, 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 well, let me show you over here. Sorry about the mask. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so you have a steam main up there. Right. Right. And if this wet return, right, has difficulty, if the wet return has a difficult time returning condensate back to the it boiler, it's going to back up. But think about it. Your Hartford loop mm -hmm. is right here. Is, is about here. Right. Right. So this whole, the pipe from here down and the mm -hmm. entire run, the entire run is only filled with water, but you have crazy amount of of um height of this of this drop by right. the boiler yeah so if if this has a hard time bringing back water to the boiler water is going to pour out of that steam main and then when when it does that the the last radio on the line which is that t mm -hmm. right there is also going to do it and when that and if it keeps going it'll keep going down the line and you'll have banging sounds here yeah. as well and uh, make an access yeah, there's the pipe and it's all one of the things i'm gonna want you to do not is. right now, but later at a, at a different Oh, does it go into the ground here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you have an underground wet return. Well, is it? It looks like it's going into the ground there. There could be that much debris there. Yeah, I think it's probably debris because oh, I have it running. That's, That's the insulation, yeah. Um, I wanted you to put... Oh, there it is. Yeah. And it's the wrong type. Yeah. So you need to have a, a steam main there. Mm -hmm. And that is not because of the size tapping coming out of it. That okay. should be a three quarter, full three quarter port there mm -hmm. going to the, and that should be higher. Right. Now, when you say, the... Sorry. when you have steam, mm -hmm. you have, when the system's off, you have air in the pipe. Right. Okay. When the boiler turns on to create steam, the air gets pushed out. The air gets pushed out by, right, mm -hmm. the steam radiator air valves. Right. At the radiator, mm -hmm. and at the at the end of each steam main, you mm -hmm. you typically have a a main steam air valve, okay, which is similar to the what you have up there, mm -hmm. but larger in size. Right. But also the connection going to the right. the piping mm -hmm. is larger in okay. size, right? Because right? if you have just a little opening on an air valve to try to get the air out, it's working it's just bad. as hard as, yeah. as as a radiator ones. Right. Now keep in mind. You know, we have per a lot of steam in the area, a mm -hmm. lot of steam heat in the area. And every so often, you'll see a system that's as old as this house, 80 years old, right? Somewhere in that range, right? So you have 80-year-old house, and you have no indication of ever being mm -hmm. a steam main on there. But yeah. it worked. Yeah. Until it didn't, until someone started to make changes to, oh, we'll take out this radiator and we'll put a piece of cast iron baseboard instead. Or we're going to move this radiator and put it in copper and I'm going to back pitch it, you know, because yeah. people are dumb. <laughs> um, but uh, so the one you have here is better than nothing. Yeah. Right. But it's it's acting the same as a radiator one does, which is not going to accommodate the mass of air that needs to be pushed out when this two inch gets filled with filled steam. With, right. So back to this this a uh, hartford loop which is not even a hartford loop i don't know what they were thinking with this but um this needs to be much lower now someone recently commented on one of my steam videos is that you know you have so much of this scale metal scale going back to the boil which is the reason why we flush it out you know um on a monthly basis you know because dirty water will not boil 212 degrees it'll boil higher so it's more energy that's needed and more energy is more money so someone actually commented like you just did off camera was that Let's say magnetic filtration because you are doing your due diligence. You're doing a, a what's done here in the U.S., what's de being done in Europe. Europe, you don't really see steam in Europe. You see these high efficiency boilers that are located in a kitchen cabinet that provide hot water and, and space heating uh, at a little box, that, like kind of like what we have here, but it does the whole house, right? And it vents directly outside. But you'd also mention a magnetic filter on, I assume, the return. 
Yeah. Right. So someone else, someone actually commented that on one of my videos a short while ago. I haven't really done much research on it, but it makes perfect sense. If, if the frequency that the, the thing will need to be cleaned out and the, 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 the magnetic filter assembly can handle the temperature. Because this gets near, you know, 212 degrees. Right. 212 degrees, can, you, can, you can have water in a, in a liquid state and or a vapor state, right. right? It depends on how many more BTUs you add to the flame or add mm -hmm. to the water in order to change the state, which is significant. Right. You need a lot more heat to go from liquid to, 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 to steam, by the way. Right. Um, but if we were to add, a, let's say you redo this. Now, is this a code violation? No, this is stupidity. Unfortunately, right? I would, I would, it's hard. It's actually very hard here because you would have to break this 90, which is not a, a, a cast iron fitting. It's not going to break like this is. Mm -hmm. This, I could take two sledgehammers, mini sledgehammers, and this thing will shatter in about two minutes. Okay. And then the threads will be fine, but this is not. This would have to break, you know, cut, carefully cut, and then spin on. I would do a full two inch 90 here, bring, come down straight down. And you're also hindered by the one inch coming out of the bottom of the boiler there. But nonetheless, bring this down, put in your Hartford loop T where it should be with your close or shoulder nipple, and then, and then drop down and then re somehow reconnect to that, which is risky. That's, that's, this is worse than playing a game of operation with the needle and the thingy, you remember from the school, from, a, from as you're a kid? Right, but the other thing is like, this pipe's good. These this pipe, yeah, this pipe, this will all come out easy, yeah, but I'm not playing with this. Because yeah. if I can't take this, this fit, this uh, nipple out of this elbow, mm -hmm. we're in for, you know, in for like some, some challenges. Yeah. Right, because you want to not disturb that 90 to put a new nipple in there because this pipe is not, you can't adapt to this with anything. Right. I can't thread it and play it, it'll, it'll crumble apart. Yeah, yeah. So now let's say we put a magnetic filter in there, mm -hmm. right? Is it worth the aggravation with the frequency you're gonna have to clean this thing out, which we don't know, but it would be a great experiment here if you want to do it. But we also need to find a magnetic filter that's rated for the temperature. Right. There's no pressure here, but rated for, for the, the, the temperature. temperature. Yep. Which 212 degrees. You don't have steam there. No. You don't. Right. But you have it's, two you have you have the potential of two hundred and twelve degrees. Right. Right. Did they give you the the cover for your automatic uh, vent damper? No. No? Okay. You have a, uh, yeah, there it is, locked in switch. Okay. What do you got in the bucket? Yeah. So what I've been doing, I've been doing a little bit more, actually it's fairly low, I probably shouldn't do this right now. I'll do that first. What are you gonna do? So what I was doing, instead of doing a full drain and refill. Full, fully? Yeah. Why? Uh, just get like the dirty water out until okay. I get this hole because this this was all brown. Okay. So I've been doing this uh, fairly recently. How like, frequently? I, I started off once a month. Okay. And uh, but you know, like I said, when I just recently got this thing, I don't know how long it's been sitting. When was the last service? There's no tags. There's nothing. Anymore. Yeah. So all I've been getting is this. At some point, it gets a little bit lighter, and uh, I just are I you draining it fully? Not recently, okay, not okay. in the last couple of months. Yeah. So since because, I've been getting this clear, yeah. all I've been doing is once I run this and it starts looking clear, I shut it off Good. and I do it every couple of days just to get most yeah. of the, okay. the cocky. Uh, the one cocky, yeah. The one, the one bad thing about a cast iron boiler and steam and fresh oxygenated water is that every time you do that, mm -hmm. you're introducing fresh oxygenated water to the system, right. which is slowly degrading the cast iron heat exchanger, which is the block of the okay. boiler. Okay. Um, so that I never saw before. No, no, because I don't really, I don't really, but I, you know, I talk about draining. I don't drain, I never really drain completely. Right. Once in a blue one, I will only because which it's is, that dirty. Right, which is right? why I started yes. doing it. But do, doing it more than the, like once a month, it's, it's a lose, it's, it's a lose, lose situation. You know, right. you're, you're trying to, you're trying to keep the water clean by draining out the, some of the water, right. uh, but you have a hundred year old, no, I would say hundred, you have 80 year old, most houses are hundred, close to hundred now. You have an 80 year old house, 80 year old piping, 80 year old radiators that are slowly, you know, uh, degrading and this, this scale steel fragments of metal are making its way to the boiler mm -hmm. and that interferes with heat transfer. Okay. So, so it's a lose-lose, you know, either you, you don't do it and then, you know, you have, you know, poorly performing system with high energy costs or you do do it and you slowly degrade in the life expectancy of the boiler. Okay. 
there's, there's, there's no, there's, there's, there's no, no positive outcome here at the end mm -hmm. of the day because it's steam. You're just pushing the scale either way. It's One slow. way or another, either you're gonna you're decreasing life expectancy of the boiler, or you have a higher energy bill with you know and potential for something else to go wrong, like the lower the cough, not sensing a lower the condition, and mm -hmm. your boiler runs empty, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you don't want that either. Yeah. Let's figure out where the water came in. I mean, I had a good amount of water that I had. To if you had a lot of water and it was it was during a rainstorm, you have some kind of uh, weatherproofing issue. Weatherproof. Yeah. But no other no other rainstorm. I had yeah, yeah but, it, but if it was raining and you had that it definitely is that mm -hmm. it's just that you happen to be you know it happened to hit the right way and entered into the house right okay yeah, lost the finger all right let's remove these two wing nuts okay, okay. What kind of gloves you wear? uh extra large I, uh i have large no i have them good okay it's just that the my pinky on my glove broke like literally, like maybe it's Chineseium plastic. Okay. Uh, all right, we got this slant fin gas fired boiler with intermittent ignition control. He just bought the house recently and experiencing his first winter here. We're going to take our two wing nuts and put that off to the side so we don't lose them. And we're gonna remove the combustion chamber plate. Power door, by the way. See a lot of dust here. A lot of dust. Now, some people have. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, these are actually thinner. No, I'm good. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mine are like nine. Um, people commented about the retention clips that were on the burners of the. Of the Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, where's the burner tube? Um, but those retention clips are for for shipping purposes. You don't need them in place for normal operation. We're going to take all the burners out. And the nice thing about this boiler is that there's no thermal couple to change. But we are going to take a look at that burner assembly. I have a uh, 3 8 and 7 16 flare wrench. And we're going to remove the pilot tubing at the top of the gas valve. And try to get it out of there a little bit. I want to see what this is like. Let's remove the Spark ignition cable. Okay, remove that from the bottom. Good. Now, try to get this bed back. I'm not bad. There we go. And, oof. That's the dirtiest. And she's a little loose there, so we're going to tighten that up. All right, let's vacuum out this combustion chamber. Not terrible, but we're here, vacuum it out, and then we'll clean those up. I'm not really too worried about the finger, but we're good though. Yeah. Appreciate it though. Yeah, no Let's see how. All right, look, it worked. Yeah, no glove, no love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have loved to have down here the clear room for my daughter. But, I don't know, we'll see. Slow and steady wins the race. Yes, yes, yes. 
So you moved from Brooklyn, and you lived here how long? This is your first winter, right? Uh, first winter here, yes. How are the nights? Peaceful? Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, the steam heat, when it's on, is it anything banging, creaking, any abnormal sounds, or? Uh, the creaking before the pressure control was, was, was uh, connected. Banging, probably, right? Yeah. Um, I gotta work on some insulation in the upper half of the house. Okay. Because one of the radiators don't heat up as well. You mean insulation on the piping, or? Yeah, on the piping. Okay, so very good. What's happening, it runs along the crawl space underneath the roof. Oh, in front of the house. On the top of the house. Uh, and they never insulated it. Gotcha. And then I have to gain access. But also, keep in mind mm -hmm. that your steam main air valve mm -hmm. is not the right size. Right. But the one that goes upstairs yes. is right here. Oh, okay. Understood. So, uh, the bedroom that's right above this room is uh, carrying a lot of racks. Gotcha. It sounds like someone's stuck in the wall trying to get out. <laughs> you know, Some kind of poltergeist yeah, nonsense. You always uh, see those movies. Uh, um, which you get stuck in the yep. Yeah, that, I thought it was a movie. It was actually so bad, it was making my baby up at night. Oh, that's not good. Like, I realized that it was at very low temperature, so like it wouldn't bang when the temperature dropped too quickly. Yep. So that's where I kept it in the uh, insulin. Alright. There's my little rag. I'm gonna put this main one in first. So some people ask me, like, why do I spray down my burner tubes with WD-40? So after I wire brush them mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, brush them off, the I give them a, uh, a coat of WD-40. Mm -hmm. Listen, it lubricates, which it doesn't need, but also protects it. Yeah. And believe it or not, unless you actually spray WD-40, like, into flame, mm -hmm. it's not going to ignite. So by the time I put these back in there, the any flammability has already dried off. Yeah. And it also gives them a nice little coat, yeah. shiny coat. And it's there's nothing harmful to it. No. If anything, it's helpful, beneficial. It's interesting how many things WD-40 can be Like, if you have paint scratches, it takes it off. You got, oh, paint scratches? Yeah, the, the minor ones. Yeah? It takes them right off. Ah. I like the, uh, the magic eraser. That works. A little <laughs> bit more work. Um, no, you're right. If you have bird poop on your car in the middle of the winter and you don't have access to water, WD-40 works just great. Really? Huh. So taking out these retention. I've had the uh, unfortunate run-in with uh, bird poop. Have you had an unfortunate run-in though of the the, uh, the Ville's code enforcement to come here? No. Okay. No. See, <laughs> you have not experienced pain until the village um, code enforcement guys have, have stopped by your house to say hi. Yeah. Do not let them in. Never. Under any circumstance. All right. So that leaves that one back in place. And this is going to go all the way on the other side. Okay, and right there, let's get this pilot tubing in. Good. So you said one of the reasons why I'm here is to test the efficiency yes. of this. What do you think, uh, once I clean everything out, what do you think this thing will be running at? Okay. But um, like I said, I don't see them doing proper service on it, so I know it's not. Okay. Good. Well, with the amount of dirt and dust that I banged off these uh, these burners, mm -hmm. uh, and especially the one that contains the the pilot assembly, right? Um, 
you know, it'd be nice if I took them beforehand, but yeah, it's I was, kind of... I was going to mention it, and I was going to turn it. would be very <laughs> to show that. Because, you know, people oh. will say, well, you know, there's extra stuff, Mike, but, like, this is really, really, you know, next Oh, look, well, the little block just, to, uh, the little block just broke off. Let's see if I can get that back in there. Let's see. Nope. All right, let's see. in good the retention kit um, clips were for shipping they are shipping clips there's a couple manufacturers that have them mm -hmm. slanthin was one of them okay. um, they just keep the burners in place during shipping okay. they can be left in place and yeah, this one's a little bent. Else, uh, you just right out. This one is bent. And uh, yeah. I pretty much never see. I was like, why am I having such trouble? All right, fix that one. And this boiler does have one port off of the gas manifold mm -hmm. that is plugged. Like no, it probably was factory. Okay. I think that the boiler itself could be used for two different sizes. You know, that extra burner tube will in increase the um, the BTUs that it puts out. Um, and it's the same same cast iron block. Mm -hmm. So I guess they make a uh, two versions out of it. I right, reconnected that. That's back into place. All the burners are back in. Um, I guess we could fire it up. Is the uh, thermostat on or? It's on. It's, it's probably not as high, but. Okay. It is on. All right, that damper is going through a power sequence. It is now closed. And I guess we can bypass the thermostat. But do you have like a, a Nest or a Wi Fi thermostat you can. Honeywell, no. Oh, okay. Um, manual. Uh, you want to raise up the temperature a little bit? Sure. Uh, just a few degrees more. All right. All the burners are back in place. Gas valve is secure. Um, I guess we could put back our combustion plate. Let's do that. All right. Combustion plate is back on. Our damper just opened. There's our spark. And here comes ignition. There it is. Let's take a look at our flames. Looking pretty good. Let's let that run for a few minutes and grab our Testo for combustion analysis. All right, since the customer stated that the pressure troll was not wired upon delivery of the home, let's remove this wire from the pressure troll and let's see if it turns off the boiler. I thought I had loosened it up enough. Now that should be enough. Let's remove. Oh no, where'd you go? Oh no, but it did turn off the boiler. So we are good. So when the customer took delivery of this home, the pressure troll had no wires connected to it. It was just like a, an abandoned pressure troll. In testing, I just removed one of the wires from one of the terminals. The boiler turned off. At the same time, the lower cutoff light came on. What's up with that? All right, reconnect the wire to the pressure troll. 
We do have a low water condition. Hmm. Let's, could it be that coincidental? It's kind of crazy, by the way. Let's give it some water. Still flashing. Okay, now that's on. All right, and then we will try this again. Our damper is opening. Ignition module is going to get the signal, 24 volts to turn on. There it is. Now we have ignition. And let's try this again. Let's carefully remove this wire. Okay. So the pressure troll does turn off the boiler. And that was merely, merely coincidental. Hmm. I should play lotto. All right, it's that time. There is the draft hood. We're gonna shove our probe up inside there, rest it in there on top of the boiler. We don't want to dilute that reading with the air that's being sucked in through the bottom of the diverter. All right. Since it is steam, we will have a higher stack temperature than a traditional hydronic boiler. This one is so far stupidly high, 500 degrees. It sucks. 520. Yeah, okay, so far it looks like we're stable there. No, we're going up again. We're looking at the O2 numbers. We have 8.52 parts per million or particles per million of carbon monoxide. And if I were to scroll down, 7.85 of CO2. So the only thing out of the ordinary here would be 550 degrees of stack temperature going up the chimney. Talk about waste. And that's why our gross efficiency is what it is. What do you think it is? What? No, not that, not that low. <laughs> uh, you're at 78.5 with a 560 degree stack temperature. That's 100 degrees higher than what it normally is. Yeah. yeah. Is it the introduction of the additional air from the, from the boiler? No. Nope, not at all. That's, that's totally irrelevant. Well, by the way, we took off a wad of silver foil tape uh, around this very creative uh, smoke reducer. Uh, this 7 by 6 smoke reducer. You see that smoke reducer? It looks awesome. They just broke a adjustable smoke 90 and uh, wrapped it with bubble gum and duct tape. And um, yeah, that's, that's real creative. <laughs> 583 degrees. Yeah, so this is uh, pretty sad. All right, we just zeroed out to do a draft measurement. Probes going into the same place. And that stack temperature should be up in the 500 degree mark. We are looking for a negative pressure, which it is right now. Negative 400, oh, now it's positive. Negative tens, hundreds, thousandths, right? So negative four thousandths of pressure. Stack temperature still up there, 560 degrees. And then we'll clipboard that and print the results. All right, let's check our gas pressure. Inlet side, gas is off. Digital manometer. Let's see what we're working with. 6.75 inches of water column, perfect. All right, disconnected and reinstalled the plug on the inlet. We're testing the outlet side for our pressure while it's running out of the gas valve. There's our spark ignition. And let's see what we're working with. 3.5, 3.8, 3 3.6. So minimum is 3.5. And let's see, wait for it to open fully. Unless it is open fully already, I didn't even notice it, but 
3.75. So we're bouncing between 3.67 and 3.7, 3.67, 3.673, 3.7, 3.7, 3.673. All right, within specification, it's good. So finishing up, going over a overall overview with the customer, and I'm standing right here, and one thing didn't pop out to me right away, and I always say this, the homeowner has mentioned to me twice already, a good technician is observant of his surroundings. Yes, I noticed the abandoned sump pump, the sewage ejector pit by to the left of the top of the basement stairs, but there's one here, one thing here that I overlooked, and even though I'm licensed everywhere in the face of the earth, I still miss, you shall not reduce the discharge line on a safety relief valve under any circumstances, right? So we have a three quarter inch coming out of the side of the relief valve, it immediately reduces to half inch, and then it goes to a maximum of six inches off the ground. This can never, shall never be reduced down in size. It can be reduced, in, increase in size, but it should never be reduced. And this is more, a lot more important than that right there. A lot more important. That banging you're hearing is, is happening right here, by the way. I know it sounds like it's up there, but you have, you know, the extreme height there trying to drip back to the boiler. You really should correct this. This is like dumb because that, that's throwing everything off. That's going to throw off. That's, that's going to contribute to a tremendous amount of your sludge and your scale and your dirty water in there because this is just a trap. You know, that maybe 50 feet, 50, 60 feet of one inch return piping, condensate return is no good. Yeah, and water where it shouldn't be. But that, you can put that in your report. I'm also going to put that on a receipt right now that I have to send to you again. Okay. But uh, this sh that shall not ever be reduced. This is just disgusting. Look at the pressure troll. They didn't even wire control wiring to it. The boiler was basically running away every single time there was a call for heat. And we hope that the low water cutoff would control and turn off the boiler if there was a low water condition. Look at the MC cable, the piece of, of uh, BX going right into, wrapped with duct tape and, and electric tape. This is disgusting. People call themselves professional and they install this. Ugh, I'm appalled. But we do welcome a new client to the Pipe Doctor family with a new maintenance agreement.